Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, this is the next lecture in the series and we're going to talk about redox, which stands for oxidation and reduction equations. And this lecture is going to answer questions like what are oxidation and reduction? How can we recognize an oxidation reduction or redox reaction? How can we produce electricity from redox reactions? And what is corrosion and some ways to control it? So we're going to cover all of those things in just a short period of time. So again, as these lectures go on, you know that they're getting much more complex and you do need to make sure that you are uh, reviewing this material using quizzes and notes and your textbook, etc. Okay, so some of the reactions that happen in everyday life that are redox, combustion of gasoline, the browning of an apple, corrosion of metals, photosynthesis, and lightening of hair color or bleaching your hair. Those are all redox reactions that happen in daily life. The earliest definitions defined oxidation as either the, the addition of oxygen or the loss of hydrogen. And they defined the reduction as the loss of oxygen or the gain of hydrogen. And you can see that these are all redox reactions that are happening here. You will be able to classify these very, very shortly. The modern definitions of reduction and oxidation involve the movement of electrons. For example, the highly electronegative oxygen atom takes electrons to form an anion. So loss of electrons is oxidation, and gain of electrons is reduction. So the way to remember this is Leo the lion says grr. So, loss of electrons equals oxidation, gain of electrons equals reduction. You think that's really silly now, but I still use that today. I didn't learn Leo the Lion, I learned a different one, but kind of the same thing. That mnemonic has helped me every day in chemistry since then. Electrons are transferred from the atom that is oxidized to the atom that is reduced. Okay, that's important, so I'm going to say it again. Make sure you have it in your notes. Electrons are transferred from the atom that is oxidized to the atom that is reduced. This will be important in electrochemistry, which we will cover next. Zinc, in this example, loses the electrons, so its charge increases. And hydrogen ion gains electrons, so its charge decreases. So the zinc is oxidized and the hydrogen ions are reduced. Redox reactions always have an oxidation and a reduction. If something is oxidized, then something else is always reduced. The oxidizing agent, or oxidant, oxidizes another substance and becomes reduced itself. The reducing agent, or reductant, reduces another substance and becomes oxidized itself. So when you take a look at this example with brom bromium, uh, bromine and chlorine mixing together, when you look at it, which one becomes reduced and which one becomes oxidized? Remember, the oxidized agent, or not the oxidizing agent, sorry, the one that gains electrons is the one that is reduced. The one that loses electrons is the one that is oxidized. So when you take a look at the bromine ions, they're losing their electrons, so they become right. I feel like Dora the Explorer here, because I'm waiting for you to answer in your head. And then the chlorine gains the electrons, so it becomes exactly. So for the following reactions, identify which element or compound is oxidized and which is reduced. So let's take a look at the first one. We've got lead to oxide mixed with hydrogen gas. So remember, we're only looking on the reactant side of the equation. 
and the lead 2 oxide becomes reduced and the hydrogen becomes oxidized. Because remember, it, the hydrogen lost electrons, so it became oxidized. And the lead 2 oxide gained, because the lead itself gained the electrons, so it became reduced. So let's take a look at the next one. We've got iron 3 oxide mixed with carbon monoxide. So the iron 3 oxide is the one that gets reduced, and the carbon monoxide is the one that gets oxidized. And in this case, it follows the old example where it's gaining an, uh, an oxygen in order to become oxidized. That's not always the case, though. Remember that. In the final example, where you have a magnesium solid mixing with chlorine gas to form magnesium chloride, the magnesium is the one that gets oxidized, and the chlorine is the one that gets reduced. Remember, you don't always look for just the metal to say reduced. Okay, in this case, it's the opposite. It's the gas that gets reduced. Okay, so let's look at these. You're going to use the change in oxidation number to determine which elements are oxidized and which are reduced in these reactions. And I'm going to do them with you on another screen. So we're going to mix nitric acid with uh, bromic acid, and we're going to get nitrous oxide, bromine, and water. So let's go ahead and do that on another screen. Okie dokie. So when we put these together, we have to write our oxidation numbers always because that's the only way you're going to keep track of these things. And remember that nitrate acts as a polyatomic ion, so it's got a single charge by itself. Hydrogen bromine. And we're going to look at its resultant particles. We've got NO2, NO plus Br2 plus H2O. Okay, so let's look at the component parts. Hydrogen is plus 1 here. Nitrogen is a plus 5. And oxygen is a minus 2. Plus 1, minus 1. In this case, the nitrogen is plus 2, and the oxygen remains minus 2. The bromine has a zero charge, and this is plus 1, and this is minus 2. So you see that the oxygens, and I'm going to change my color, the oxygens do not change their charge. The hydrogens do not change their charge. Okay. So we know that those are out. But you see that the nitrogen and the bromine change their charge. So in this case, the bromine is gaining an electron, okay, because, or I'm sorry, it's losing the electron. Sorry, brain fart. It's losing the electron because that negative one goes to a zero charge. And this nitrogen is gaining electrons because this plus 5 is going to a plus 2. So if this one's gaining electrons, remember GER, and this one's losing electrons, LEO. So this is oxidized. Ooh, help if I can spell oxidized. And this one's reduced. Okie dokie. So let's take a look at the next one. So we have KMnO4, so potassium permanganate, plus hydrochloric acid, gives you manganese chloride, chlorine, gas, water, and potassium chloride. So let's go back, add a new screen, and we'll write that out. So we've got KMnO4, and then we've got hydrochloric acid, HCl, 
manganese chloride plus chlorine gas plus H2O plus KCl. Okay, so I'm going to write out the oxidation charges. So our potassium is a plus one. It's always a plus one. Manganese is a plus two. Oxygens are a minus two. Hydrogen is a plus one. Chlorine is a minus one. Manganese is a plus two. This chlorine is a minus one. This chlorine is a zero. Plus one, minus two, plus one, minus one. So let's look at where the charges change. So our oxygens stay the same. So here's a minus two, here's a minus two. Our potassiums stay the same. Our manganese stays the same. Our chlorines change because we have a minus one here and a zero here. We also have minus ones as well, so just so that you know. And our hydrogens stay the same. So when we look at this, the only thing that's really changing is the chlorines. And the chlorines are losing this electron to go to that zero state. So they lose the electron, so they're oxidized. So this whole unit here has to gain the electron because remember one gets reduced and one gets oxidized. So the, the potassium permanganate gets reduced and the hydrochloric acid gets oxidized. And if you need to check where the reduction happens, Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I did the math wrong. If you want to check where the reduction happens, it's in this manganese um, because it goes from a plus 7. My bad. I was looking at the minus 2 and adding it up, but I forgot the 4 subscript. So it goes from a minus 7 to a plus 2, so it's gaining those electrons. So it gets reduced and the hydrochloric acid gets oxidized. So let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so when we put this one together, this one's going to be a little bit tougher. So we're going to do our um, charges as well. So I'm going to write that out, Sb plus HNO3, so that's nitric acid. Sb2O5 plus nitrous oxide plus water. Okay, so when we look at the charges, this one's zero, hydrogen is plus one, nitrogen is plus five, oxygen is minus two. This is minus two, this becomes a plus five, this becomes a minus two, or I'm sorry, a plus two, this is a minus two, this is a minus two, and this is a plus one. So let's circle, and I'm going to change the color so that you can see it a little bit better. Let's circle the ones that don't change. So we've got hydrogen doesn't change, oxygen doesn't change. So we know that the only things that are left are nitrogen and Sb. So we see that Sb goes from a 0 to a plus 5. The only way to get there is to lose electrons. The nitrogen goes, so that's Sb, and then N goes from a plus 5 to a plus 2. So the only way it can do that is to gain electrons. So Leo, Leo the lion goes Gur. So we've got um, the nitrogen gets reduced and the SB gets oxidized. The final one I'm going to have you do on your own. You've got car carbon 
plus sulfuric acid gives you carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and water. So I want you to go ahead and look at those, put the charges in, and then see which one gets oxidized and which one gets reduced. And if you have questions, see me during office hours and I'll be happy to help you. Okay, so when we balance redox reactions, remember that each half reaction contains a reactant and a product that looks the same. So here's one. We've got permanganate ion plus iron 2 ion gives you iron 3 ion and manganese 2. So the first step is to split the complete equation into oxidation and reduction half reactions. So again, you have to identify which one's getting reduced and which one gets oxidized. So in this case, the permanganate ion gets reduced, so it goes to magnesium or manganese, I'm sorry. And then oxidation, you have um, iron losing an electron to go from a plus two to a plus three state. So the next step in balancing a redox reaction is to balance each half reaction. So first, balance all the elements except hydrogen and oxygen. It's the same rules as balancing reactions as before. So MnO4 minus gives you Mn2 plus. So the Mn's match, so now we go to the hydrogen and oxygen. So balance oxygen by adding water. So MnO4 minus gives you Mn2 plus plus 4 H2O because that gives you the four um, oxygens. Balance the hydrogens using hydrogen ions. So we have eight hydrogen ions plus MnO4 minus gives you MnO2 plus plus 4 H2O and then you finally balance the charge using electrons. So you have to add five more electrons on the reactant side in order to balance out the charges. So those are the steps that you need to make sure to balance each half reaction. Balance the elements except for hydrogen and oxygen, then balance oxygen with waters, balance hydrogens with hydrogen ions, and then balance it with electrons. So when we look at that, we're going to balance the, the next half reaction. So we have Fe2 plus going to Fe3 plus. So there's no H and O in there. We balance oxygen by adding H2O. There's no oxygen. We balance hydrogen by using hydrogen ions. Uh, there's no hydrogen. And then finally we balance using the electrons. So we add an electron to the product side and then our, elect then our charges actually balance. So those are our two balanced half reactions now. So step three, you have to take the half reactions and have the same number of electrons. So if necessary, you need to multiply one or both of the half reactions to make the number of electrons even. So remember, in the first one with the permanganate ion, we added five electrons. We only added one in the second half reaction, so we have to multiply that whole thing by five. So now what we do is we add those half reactions together and cancel out anything that appears on both sides. So we've got 5E plus 8H plus MnO4 gives you Mn2 plus plus 4H2O plus 5E Fe2 plus yields 5 Fe3 plus 5 electrons. So the electrons show up on both sides so we can cross them out and this is our resultant. We've got 8 hydrogen ions plus permanganate ion plus 5 iron 2 ions yields 5 iron 3 ions a manganese 2 plus ion and 4 waters. And then you double check, always double check, that the elements and the charges balance. And I have done that for you here. And those are the steps. Now, you need to go through these steps a couple of times, write them out as a procedure if you need to, because you will be using that during your lecture quizzes during your questions and make sure that you can do these. So that's going to conclude this lecture for today. If you have any questions, by all means, please see me on office hours and I will run through this with you personally. 
Have a great day.